everybody, this is Joe with Speedway Motors Tech Talk, and today we're gonna to assemble one of our G-Comp front suspensions. Now this is a suspension system that we basically design and engineer right here in-house, build it in-house. Tom Brown is one of the product engineers who actually designed the thing, and he's gonna talk us through the assembly. All right, so first step is the steering rack. Yep, install it, just slides in from the top here. Bolts go in from the front and the nuts go up inside the pockets. This is one advantage of a G-Comp just right out of the gate is that it comes with a power rack and pinion. Yeah. So that's not a, an additional bolt-on thing that you have to try to figure out as an afterthought or have try to spend a fortune on a you know, faster ratio steering box or something like that. This is part of the kit right out of the gate. Racks shave a lot of weight off the front end rather than a heavy power steering box and they're also just easier to deal with in a lot of ways. After the bump stops go on, the next step is the lower control arms. Now, it's worth noting here that this is all powder coated. We're gonna actually install this in a car, so before final assembly, we had everything powder coated. When you order this, it's gonna be delivered to you in bare steel, which includes the control arms. Now, they're gonna come assembled with the ball joints pressed in and with the bushings pressed in. We pushed them out to do the powder coating. Now we're gonna reassemble them before we put them on the subframe. After the adjuster nuts on the shock, you just insert it through the spring. After the spring's on, you're not gonna use these. Leave the cones off. They're not needed with this setup because the spring seat is actually this pocket that's built into the car. So you won't need that. So then you just insert this up through the hole. There's two long spacers and two short spacers. The long spacers and the longer of the two bolts go through the top. Okay, bolt comes in from the front. Put one spacer on. Then it goes through the shock. Lower shock mount, same basic procedures, just you're using the two shorter spacers. So bolt comes in from the back on this one. Put the one spacer on. All right, next we uh, reassemble the upper arm. Bushing goes in on the one side. Cross shaft comes in from the other side. Right like that. Other bushing goes in from this side. And just make sure it's seated. The nuts will pull it up tight. Washers on both sides. And then the nuts. With this style bushing, there's a metal sleeve inside that spins inside the plastic bushing, so you can actually tighten these fully before you put them on the vehicle. Unlike rubber bushings, you normally leave a little bit loose until you get the right height set. Okay, ball joint comes in from the top, boot comes on from the bottom, and then this retainer goes over all of that. Now we're gonna put the upper control arms on. One of the decisions that needs to be made is for uh, caster alignment, it adjusts with these caster slugs. There's numbers on them, laser etched. Zero, one, two, and three. Zeros are straight up in the center. That's where we're gonna start. Once the car is all assembled, set on the ground, ride height, loaded, everything's ready to go. When you're gonna do the final um, alignment, you use these to adjust the caster that you want. They're put in, in in pairs, so each arm has two slots. You have to use zeros or ones or twos. You can't intermix them. 
So, but you can use zeros on one side and twos on the other if you wanted to. These are symmetrical arms. Caster slugs just slide into these slots on the back of the control arm cross shaft. Once the bolts are in and loose, the uh, camber shims, which we're gonna start off with a 316, so you can start off with basically whatever because that'll be adjusted later. They go over the bolts like this between the cross shaft and the mounting plate. And that just spaces the arm towards the inside of the car. The thicker the camber shim, the, the more it pulls the arm in. And that may be something that the alignment shop will, will use when they align the car, or if this is something you're actually gonna run at the track, it's really easy to tune your, your camber by sliding these in and out. Exactly, because you don't have to take the arm off to do it. You just loosen it up enough to slide these out, slide the new set in there. You can stack them to get whatever dimension you want to arrive at the camber that you're looking for. Okay, these spindles are not left or right. They're, they're symmetric side to side. Until you put a steering arm on them, it doesn't matter which side of the car you put them on. Basically, we, these started off as a two inch drop spindle for a first gen Camaro early Chevelle. And then we raised the upper ball joint to get a little better camber gain. That was the foundation for the start of the G-Comp product line. And so as an assembled G-Comp suspension, we have a tall spindle and then a relatively short, compared to what might have been stock, upper control arm. And then those two things come together, add camber gain as the suspension compresses as you going into a corner. Yeah, essentially by, by raising the upper ball joint, the upper arm sits at a steeper angle. So at, for every inch that it, the spindle moves up through body roll or whatnot, the upper ball joint also moves in because the arm's already angled up. So that tilts the spindle in pretty quick. And the idea here is that you actually have the tread surface of the tire, the part that's meant to grip the road, in contact with the road, not the sidewall all rolled over like it might have been on a stock Camaro or whatever. Especially with the earlier tire designs in that, they were, they were taller tires, taller sidewalls. They would flex a lot more than a lot of the stuff does today. So keeping that tire contact patch flat was critical then. Um, now you can run a little bit more static camber, but with the camber gain, you end up where you need to be through body roll. With wider tires, it's somewhat more critical to keep it flat because if you've got a 10 inches of tread and it's not flat, you're running on four or five inches of rubber anyway. We've played around a little bit with these steering arms as far as length goes, and this is a real streetable ratio with this rack. It's quicker than most stock steering is, but not so quick that it becomes darty on the street. Next up, we're gonna put the tie rod ends on, the outers, and to do that, you wanna kinda get the rack centered in its travel to start off with. Everything will get checked later on when the car's all assembled, you set the toe and whatnot, but we just wanna get it close. So you basically, you run it all the way to one end and then mark it on the shaft, run it all the way to the other end, counting turns, and then back it off approximately halfway. All right, now that we got the rack basically centered, we just thread these on, outer tie rod ends on far enough to line up with the hole in the steering arm and put it together. Again, once the car's all done, you're gonna do the toe and everything else after it's all aligned. So this just gets us in enough that we can drive it around if we have to. All right, the next step is to move on to the sway bar. And the first thing we're gonna do is install these pillow blocks. Now this is one thing that varies a little bit from platform to platform with the G-Comp. Uh, this being a first gen Camaro, these pillow blocks bolt to the top of the frame and there's this little threaded pad welded to the top of the frame rail here. So we just put a little Loctite on these screws and we're gonna tighten them down. We are gonna leave these just a little bit loose until we get the bar in, that way it'll kind of align itself and not put it in a bind.
Okay, basically we centered the sway bar in the blocks so that roughly equal stick out on each end. To keep it centered, these clamp collars go on here. We want a small gap between the clamp collars and the, the pillow block. So you can run one side up against and tighten it down. The other side will take a, a nickel or something about that thick and stick it in there, tighten that down. It just leaves a little bit of float in there so nothing binds up. Now we'll put the pinch bolts in the arms. The arms are straight, so they're not left or right, they just get flipped. But uh, you'll want the bolts coming in from the top and the nut on the bottom on each side, so then it becomes a left and a right, essentially. The splines are clocked to the bar itself, so the splines on each end line up. These are broached in pairs, so the splines line up. So in theory, we should be able to get these to where this surface is the same angle on both sides so that the arms aren't out of phase with each other. And you want to put these on so they're just about flush with the end of the sway bar. Sway bar links. The left hand end, we usually put that up. You can do it either way. Just make sure that they're the same side to side so if you're in a hurry, you know which way to turn it. Um, the knurled end is going to go up on here. A little bit of Loctite on the top. This bolt goes through this upper heim and threads into the end of the sway bar arm. And basically we'll put one side together complete, upper and lower bolts. The other side we're going to put just one end and let it hang. Ultimately that'll get hooked up after the car's set at ride height. You don't want to hook it up now because if one of these arms is down a little lower than the other, when you set the car flat it's going to have preload in the bar which changes the way the car handles. So you always want to set that up after you get the ride height finalized, the car is ready to go. The last thing you hook up is the sway bar and basically you'll extend or collapse one of these ends or the other so it lines up and just run the lower bolt through. And that's also something that if you are making ride height adjustments at the track or just at home cranking on the coilover, unhook the sway bar because otherwise it'll get all bound up. Especially if you're going to scale a car, you definitely want to take the sway bar completely free and hook that up after all the scaling is done. So we're basically done here. Now this particular one that we assembled, this is a G-Comp for a first gen F body. How is this different than across some of the other platforms? Well, the first and second gen Camaros are essentially the same. Uh, sway bar is pretty much the same. On the first gen Novas, they have a slightly different sway bar set up. They're also a narrower, they have a narrower track width. For the most part, G-Comp is going to do anything you're going to want a street going pro touring car to do. Yeah. And now this is something that we've engineered here, we build here, we take great pride in this all fitting the way that it's supposed to and working the way that it's supposed to. If you're in the middle of the install and have any questions or issues, feel free to let us know and thanks for watching.